Natalia is a thrive of conscious entrepreneurs, coaches, healers, and manifestors. What I read is that they channel their flow to co-create peace, love, and unity. They present a divinely organized collection of projects that resonates with truth, love, and home. Now, when I was reading about Natalia, something that really caught my eye is that it says, be brave, be direct, ask questions. So be open, okay? Be brave, ask questions. Open your heart to what else is possible. So that's what Natalia said. And we are ready to listen to her. And as she asks, for us to be brave, direct, and ask questions. All right. So get your questions ready. Welcome, Natalia. Hello. Thank you so much. What a beautiful introduction. You know, that message before the meeting does help. It does. It does make a huge difference. I appreciate it deeply. You know, if everyone did it, every meeting would be as epic as this one, okay? <laughs> Thank you all. It's a pleasure. It's an honor to be here. I'm extremely happy, grateful, and proud to be part of the UNIT community and uh, part of the DAO ecosystem that we're creating, part of the beautiful narrative that we're all onboarding the world these days. Um, my name is Natalia, and... Uh, my voice is this way because I've been actually sick for the first time in uh, the past two and a half years or so. And I had a cold, just a cold. <laughs> but, you know, it was epic. It was one of those colds. It's like, my world <laughs> is turning upside down, you know, physically. Um, I tell to some people who get it, um, I wasn't able to protect myself physically. Um, during a deep exposure to a lot of people in person um, do the conferences. And also I was uh, actually uh, just having my natural cycle. Um, one of my dearest coaches and um, Reiki masters I've worked with said that it's a totally normal thing to get uh, cold uh, once a year. It's totally normal. Like... It's actually better to have cold so that we process things physically through our body as opposed to emotionally, mentally, or energetically, you know, physically comes out. It's like having an ayahuasca without it, if you're really conscious. And uh, to me, these topics are important. I think at the mental health world that we are all leading here, it's important to know your language around medicine and what it means to own our health and what it means to really speak our truth as coaches. I had a dream today, um, just before this. My dreams I record every day, several of them. And uh, it was about uh, leading, deep leadership, deep manifestation voice, the voice of truth, the voice of power, the voice of real unity, <laughs> the unit. And uh, yeah, it was a beautiful, inspirational dream. I coached myself. I fired my old coaches I've had in the past years because I realized I'm better than this, actually, yes. If I'm working with people that are better than me, they would be my coaches then then we don't need to do this monetary exchange. So as you can tell, probably the past couple of years, um, I don't work with anyone but myself. Literally as a DAO leader, right? Leader, because I'm the only person in my DAO. And uh, as a romantic partner, I still coach myself. And which is beautiful because then I select a mirror to work with that is so direct, that really helps in my inner communications deeply answers all of my questions possible. So if in the morning I communicate myself to myself when I wake up, that's when magic really happens. And that healing happened for me really fast, physically, and this week, 
um, simply because first of all, I've never went to doctors in my life unless it was like weird, like thing that was like, this is completely new. I have no knowledge about that. I can't quite communicate with that spirit yet. Let me check, you know, the person, you know, telling from the medicine world, uh, what is that so that I can work with that spirit. I would never say yes to any medicine unless I lost everything, you know, physically. And I was like, I needed something outside of me. Um, that is not uh, food that I per personally choose to eat. <sighs> yeah, this is some of uh, the personal stories I tell during the time that I share with others. And they say, Italy, it's all about you. And I'm like, you fucker, you don't get it. I'm speaking as your subconsciousness. I'm your greatest mirror here. My true love is so deep that I'm so curious about you that I can't stop talking about myself so I can learn more about what I'm looking at so I can ask you the better questions. So it's a little bit of a different approach. I liked how our previous speakers are almost like this bigger story that is unfolding. And I love the sequence of this show, this presence shared, is that because first we meditate for 20 minutes, right? Then we ask, ask basically a permission to go into that vulnerable space, which I think was done already. And I felt comfortable to jump in as my ET self myself that is not quite in the same frequency as majority of population yet and in the present moment of recording because I go and freak people out by my presence. This is how I actually show up in physical. And uh, people are freaking out because they need their mirror opportunity. They're like, wow, this is even possible being this hippie conscious chick and not give a fuck. And uh, Actually, yes, and we're creating the whole world. Um, so if you join our team, then you might have a lot of fun. And uh, these kind of things, um, I think, are very inspiring for the leaders of, you know, big corporations and big companies and big organizations and everything that is like big. Because then I have no problem directly speaking with their unconscious and be like, dude, wake the fuck up. Where one? What do you want to what do you want to see? What do you want to know? Why are we present together? Why are we sharing this precious time? What I'm gonna do now is magic, of course, digital shamanism work. Um, instead of looking at myself on the video, right? Um, myself, I'm also looking in Mario Corner. And um, I was looking at you more on top of me, like my higher self. And now I'm connecting deeply to Mary O'Connor, side by side. And I'm recording this um, as NFT, yes. Um, so you'll see my screen. Mary O'Connor is here. She's holding a, a crystal. Yeah, I mean, that's how it works. And I'm connecting to your frequency out of all people here and of course you have the camera on which i appreciate deeply believe me this is a lot of energy work being done sharing your space with us sharing your presence sharing all the images of dogs and cats and the baby and now george is here that's what really makes me happy is really observing a present moment and seeing what am i noticing in my own curiosity. And uh, that one really helps me to get to know myself. George, hi. You have a, you have a very interesting green artwork, photography, very like futuristic, um, futurism movement, uh, you know, back in the twenties or something. I'm wondering what that piece is. And I'm going to increase my screen so we can all see. Nice light bulbs, uh, bulbs, and they basically like go up from this city. 
and then the light is shining from the city. But, you know, to me, it's not a negative, you know, connotation of the industry. It's like a very interestingly alchemic and um, timeless uh, sequencing of um, just two colors, basically. Uh, it really helps understand what's happening now. Thank you so much, George. This is amazing. I hope you sell it as NFT as like hot pancakes now and then people screenshot this. <laughs> it's from a friend of mine. Um, yeah, art really inspires behind our uh, presence and everything is art. Um, as an artist myself, uh, my presence is art. You know, yeah, your presence is art. We're all presenting so much. And I think that's what we learned in the past two years. Uh, is that how nice it is to actually talk with our surroundings um, when we show up in these Zooms and how much they can talk for us. And then when I show up in person, of course, how important the communication that I'm subconsciously sending and unconsciously really sending to uh, you know, people who are observing this. Um, and stories behind that decision um, that we took when making uh, that purchase and that exchange. And uh, those decisions are really guiding our life. And that's where, you know, this like consumption of, uh, you know, our communication comes into play for me. <sighs> anyway, anyone has any questions now? I feel like this is, this goes, goes back to fashion and I feel like I need to stop talking. That's the sign for me. <laughs> Anyone, uh, George, maybe Mary, I'd love to hear from you. Mary? Hi, Joe. Joe showed up. Hi. Hi, everyone. My voice Hi. isn't so good. My voice is. Your voice okay. is as good as mine, believe me. <laughs> We're two women here uh, on the screen right now that I'm observing. So your voice is as powerful as it can be, making up for uh, one more balance act. <laughs> I love uh, talking about these things, um, balance. What does it mean? What is balanced? Why <laughs> I have to like name something balanced like my company and then be like, this is what you get. You're gonna work with that. <laughs> Um, so yeah, what is balance? Joa, what is balance? Libra, you got it. Right, that's my Aquarius and you know, in the sixth house kind of uh, Saturn return. What is balance? What is that Libra? My mom was a lawyer. I'm like, I know everything about truth, believe me. <laughs> and then I'm like, wait, what is truth? Yeah, Libra, you know, the scales, right? Scale. scale. Yeah, you see all options available, I guess. Yeah. Hey. For me, for me, it's balance is a bird flying a bird, and the bird needs two wings to fly. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Definitely helps to embody it, right? And then I want to sit correctly, you know, and be like, <sighs> yeah, and feels uh, what is flying, you know, we're all angels, so we can fly. And that feels right to say it. It's like, yeah, of course we have two hands, you know, we can embody that feeling. We fly in our dreams. Do you dream about flying, anyone? Mary? Oh, for many years. <laughs> cool. Cool. My earliest memory as a child is I must have been very small because I was still in a cot, you know, like um, a toddler or something. Yeah. And I left my body and I couldn't get back into my cot. And I was banging against the walls, trying to get down from the ceiling back into my cot. Wow. And then I, I think I didn't fly for a couple of years after that. Then I started again. Yeah. Well, thank you for sharing. Right, I feel you. <laughs> I feel you. <laughs> Hank, do you dream about flying? Dreaming? 
No, yeah, just not only dreaming, just do it. Yeah? That's what he has learned uh, today. <laughs> just do it. So uh, for me, flying is an attitude, I think. And uh, it was very helpful for me going into the mountains and uh, to have very, very steep mountain to go up to the summit. And uh, it's heavy, heavy. And at that moment, to uh, to have an image, to have an, yeah, an, an image of, of flying and uh, not taking effort in the climbing, but uh, making it uh, in as usual in, in the normal process. And, and uh, yeah, it's going easy. Yeah, so yeah, I, I, I fly yeah, up uh, <laughs> I fly up in the mountains. I fly, I fly. <laughs> wow, you do inspire me to go up in that mountain and try. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Hank. <laughs> George, you, you dream of flying or you fly and both? I must say not. I must say I'm just a, a very grounded mm, specimen. Cool. Yeah, I am related to the old, uh, uh, the old, just, uh, you know, the Celts, um, in Spain, it's are called uh, Celtiberians, like earthier uh, beings. Yeah, yeah, earth beings. Yeah, I had a dream today, George. You have to figure it out for me what it means. <laughs> Another one of those dreams just before this, right? Um, um, so okay, we're in the cave, and then a lot of earth comes uh, in trucks, and then just you know brings like you know just just covers the whole cave with like amazing people wow <laughs> and then i'm like holding space like and like people are holding space energetically like trying to protect them like physically but they're like the earth is fucking cold like going there it's like, it's beautiful <laughs> beautiful yeah sounds well i mean i mean i think we have to find out the the way to to go back to the roots yeah and other and in all in all in all the options possible. I think this uh, blockchain excuse can, can give us uh, a way to, 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 to do that. I like the excuse thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Joe, what do you think? You know that? the tribe. I, I feel the tribe is, is, the only, is the only way. Yeah. No countries, no, yeah. no nothing. Just tr tribe. A human tribe. <laughs> That's it. Thank you so much. <laughs> Joe, what do you think about blockchain, though? Ah, uh, you know, we here. We... Yeah, sorry, Joe. Go on. Go ahead, George. I don't know who makes these unit calls these days. You never know. <laughs> I'm a big fan of blockchain. Um, I'm actually working with unit. I like your fake, uh, fake backpack in the background there. Thank you so much. It means a lot to hear it. It's yeah. uh, I, I don't I don't know what that means. Is it something? What's inside it's is to you? <laughs> is it NFT? Could be, could be. It's a collaboration. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm super excited about blockchain and yeah. uh, the uh, ability for everyone to kind of participate and be connected with each other and democratize access to everything, um, build a more cohesive community world. So yeah, it's a very powerful. What do you mean by democratizing access? Well, like for for example, somebody in um, like a kid in Somalia or North Korea, even if they can get a smartphone, can uh, who's a musician has no access to like uh, gatekeepers in New York City or something, who uh, you know decide what music is good or who can listen to it, or even Google, which runs YouTube, you know, can decide what you can have on the platform. Um, you can you can uh, get your content to people and then also earn um, directly from them without any anyone in between um, sort of peer to peerization of things yeah. um, on that scale so I think it's a there's going to be a lot of really amazing um, use cases or I guess uh, revelations globally coming up in the next few years I, yeah. I think from that it's a good um place for mythology creation i always have to say it's 
it's it's about remembering the mythologies you know of uh, the ancient studies of the past and uh, seeing how things play out in a completely different way it's like our own new mythology and at the same time we see the archetypes uh, play out and I love working with archetypes so much because they tell such a um, like beautiful story it's just it just becomes a story and so quickly we can communicate so much with these concepts um, so uniting on blockchain I think is a beautiful way to uh, synthesize our languages and the ground technology uh, for practical um, applications, <laughs> really. Um, yeah, when I heard a word application in the chat um, for unit on Telegram, I was like, yeah, it's an application. It's enterprise technology. It's enterprise technology, you beings. You realize how huge is that? Somebody build their own technology. Like, it's a big deal. Like, don't please, please don't, I'm pretty sure, like, this is a big fucking deal. They, their executives, like just those that you work with, they've done so much in their life. They're technologists, they're visionaries, they're powerful beings, they're extremely powerful coaches to be with. Uh, those are the beings that we're all surrounding ourselves in the blockchain community. And it's beautiful to see that the voices are really uniting and we're all synthesizing our narrative together in the beautiful weaving process of mythology. Telling stories around the fire, that's what I really love. Yeah. I miss that from my family. And it's like, this is family here in digital, thank you. Does anyone feel like anything that came up that you'd like to share? Mythology, weaving. I was thinking on the runes. Hmm. On this. Good. What the does it mean? It means protection. Cool. Very good. Thank Health you. And, and wealth. And I was thinking with your words, on your words there, talking about this blockchain, uh, maybe we could connect to, to these symbols, uh, old symbols. Mm -hmm. um, they, they connected people uh, with other uh, forces. And maybe we would have to relate to them to, to have the proper energy for, for this project, not just only zeros on ones and just only that no? my favorite topic is uh you know um how far is too far in terms of like did we go too far Let's mm. just sage it really fine. you're breathing um and uh, the thing with the technology is that we forget to breathe physically when we code we're literally in this you know spaceship kind of thing and it's a very Arcturian thing. Like, if you know what I mean, it's like very, very um, trance-like environment where our bodies are basically in um, future casting or in no time space. And we are writing the code for so many of us to be in. That's why music is such a great way to get ourselves back into this reality and start moving our body and start really channeling, um, you know. So it's like, what is electronic? What is digital? What is physical? What is embodied? Mm. And that's the stories I'm telling to my children in terms of like, um, you're coming into the physical world. Um, we're gonna be speaking, we're gonna be dancing. We're gonna be, you know, creating uh, physically. We're gonna be touching nature, touching each other. We're going to be eating good food. And, you know, these, these are the things that I'm onboarding uh, everyone in. It's like, what are we doing now versus um, where I'm coming from again in the vision? Is it digital or is it physical? Uh, really, really. A good point. I love to play with crystals, your beings. Me too. I wouldn't be where I'm at if I wasn't, you know, like family of crystals owner and um, 
patron rather okay nothing that is owned especially when it comes to like me my body earth and you know everything that comes the body the body of the earth nothing is owned um crystal beings talk a lot okay if you listen they teach you more than myself actually more than my higher self my higher self is like you're gonna listen to that bitch now everything that they're gonna tell and you're gonna be okay this is truth because it's coming from a crystal being, from her, from the earth, directly. It's amazing, mm. you know, but it's also like celestial communications. Uh, Mary, do you work with crystals? I mean, you do because you touch them and that's how you attracted yourself into this field, physically, like physically, I feel you here. Tell me about crystals. I don't actually specifically work with them. You, you touch them. That's uh, glass beads. Wow. Yeah. Your it's body. A, it's um, a mala it's for mounting mantras. Yeah. Thank you, Mary. Thank you. Mantra. Mary. Beautiful. Have uh, four more minutes. Um, Hank, Joe, crystals reality fabricated reality digital reality everything in between what do we believe in strange what, what uh, believing uh, uh, yeah it's more for me experiencing and knowing and yeah. I've, I work a lot of uh, in my practice and, and it's executive coaching and it, it's very concrete and uh, very traditional, but I do a lot of work with uh, crystals and uh, for instance, there is always an energy flow uh, from the chakras, from the base chakra to the upper chakras and I, I, I have the different stones and minerals for each chakra uh, available, helping in, in the process. So uh, most of my clients do not know it or recognize it, but uh, if the power is in me, yeah. uh, it's just helpful. Yeah, yeah. Knowing you know the degree of personalities that you get to meet, it's am okay. amazing to do this work of embodiment of self, understanding where mine is. I, I, will, I, will, I will show you one. Mm -hmm. Please. Joy, you work with crystals, I see. <laughs> Can you okay. see the color? Amazing. An egg. Wow. Got an egg. Amazing. That's an egg, yes. But uh, can you see the color? It's green. Green, yes. <laughs> Amazing. Green it's egg. Either. What can be better? Mala, I don't know. Mala guides and... Uh, that's, a, that's the most important one. That's the heart chakra. It's malachite. You have a malachite yeah. egg. That's cool. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And they don't sell them just anywhere, you know. Mm. Thank you so much, Hank. It means a lot to see your stones, your crystals that you work with. It's a deep honor. <laughs> it's like seeing your children. 